super helpful Power BI design trick is to know how to take more control of the vertical lines in your Power BI visuals. To build charts like this one over here, where you have a custom separation between different sections of your visualization. Like quarters, where you can then show more information. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you step by step how to set it up. Let's dive in. As a very first step, let's build this visual over here, where we have vertical lines on the left hand side of each column that go all the way to the top, where you can put extra information like percent of total or the month over month growth rate. All right, now let's go to our starting point. Now, the first thing that we're going to try out is to apply error bars to this series that is visualized, which is over here the total number of social media likes. All right, so I'm going to go to formatting options, then all the way down, there we have error bars. If you have in the preview options, the on object formatting turned on. Otherwise, you still have to toggle to the analytics tab. Okay, now I'm going to go over here to our bars. I'm going to enable it. Then we have to say what is the upper bound. And for that, I actually already wrote a measure, which is called monthly max. Now, this measure uses a max x function to find the maximum at the month level. So it iterates of all of the months, which is the granularity that we have in the visual, then calculates for each month the number of likes, returns the maximum, and multiplies that maximum by around the number 1.65. Now, if I use that one for the upper bound of the error bars, let's see what happens. So I'm going to click on add data for the upper bound, then look for my monthly max measure. There it is. And ta-da, we have error bars that go all the way to the top. However, I want them to start at zero. And for that, I have another measure, a dummy measure, which just returns zero. So that's this one over here. So that it starts on the horizontal x-axis. Now. Then we can adjust the formatting. For example, for the bars, I don't want to have a border. So that one I turn off. And the markers, I also turn off. Let's then also make them a little bit lighter so that's a bit prettier. And now we already have our vertical lines that go all the way to the top where we can show additional information like the percentages of the total. However, these vertical lines, they got through the other labels, which is from a design point of view, not so nice. So what I want to do is take those lines and push them to the left or to the right, I want to take more control over the vertical lines. Now, how can I do that? Well, to be able to do that, we should not apply these error bars to the main series, but to an additional series that we're going to add. So I'm going to turn them off again. From the data pane, we take that monthly max measure from before, and we're going to add it right above our main measure, the total number of likes. Now that gives us an extra column series with a constant value. Now, of course, we don't really want to show these columns. So we go back over here to formatting, columns, and then layout, where we can make them overlap. Now, then we can play around with the space between the series. So for example, if I put this to 50%, you see, they start to overlap. Now, the same for the space between the categories, we can play around with if we want these columns to be a little bit thinner. Now, to not show that second series for the monthly max, we go over here to series, select the monthly max, and then set the transparency to 100%. And now that we have this, we can apply the error bars to that second series, the monthly max. So let's enable them and now set the upper bound to the monthly max. And then just like before, the lower bound we can set with that dummy zero measure. All right, and then it's just a matter of formatting again. So here for the bar, I don't want to have a border, so I put that to zero, the bar color I'm going for light blue, and then here the markers I want to turn off. Now a little bit of fine tuning is needed, so we can go back to columns, and then here select again all, then layout there, we can play around with the space between the series to move these vertical lines to the left hand side of each column. Now and then for the data labels, well those we can change from here, data labels, then select the series, monthly max. And here we simply go to value and set the value, not with the monthly max, but with a different measure, like the percentage of the total or the month over month percentage. And that's it. Now, here we can play around with the formatting again. So let's go for a different color, maybe that dark blue color. Let's make it bold. All right, let's make it a little bit smaller. Now let's also change the color of the columns. So go here to likes and make it dark blue, just like this. Now for the data labels there at the top, we of course want to show a different value, not that constant value. So 
if we go back to data labels and then select the month max well here we want to set the value of the data label not with the monthly max but a different measure like the percentage of total or the month over month growth rate so and now we have their nice percentages for which of course we can also change the formatting a bit maybe to that same color blue let's make it bold all right and there you go now if i would like these percentages to be a little bit more to the right well then we can kind of repeat the same trick with an extra measure so i can go back over here to my data field take monthly max 2 all right then place this one in between the monthly max and the likes there you go and you see we have extra columns now those columns we simply make transparent again so go back to columns monthly max 2 set the transparency to 100 percent all right and then we go over here to data labels and do not apply it to the monthly max but the monthly max too where we can just do the same trick so over here let's change this to percent of total and set the color to light blue make it bold and if we want to verticalize to touch the columns well then we go back here to columns make sure that all is selected layout and then adjust over here the space between the series so in this case we have to set it to 50 percent and that's it. As a next step, I want to take even more control and turn what we have into this over here, where we have a separation by quarter. So a vertical line for the start of each quarter with the total for that quarter, the total number of social media likes there at the top in the label. All right, now it just requires a few more extra steps. So let's go back to our visual. The first thing that we're gonna do is to make sure that we have only one vertical line at the start of each quarter, for the columns January, April, July, and October. So for that, I prepared already a measure, which only returns the monthly max, that other measure, under a certain condition. And that condition I specified here at the top. Now, there I just check the month in the filter context. And if it's the first one, fourth one, seventh or tenth one, only then I return the maximum. That's it. All right. So then we can use that measure for the error bars. So if I go back to formatting error bars, here we have the monthly max series and the upper bound I'm going to set with that new measure. So monthly max start quarter. And then I kind of want to do the same thing for the data labels, only return the value for the data label if it is the starting month of a quarter. So let's go over here to our measures. And here I prepare the measure data labels value, which only returns the quarter when a certain condition holds and that condition is exactly the same as in the previous measure and this measure we cannot use to set the data label value so let's go to the formatting options then data labels now we want to change the data labels for monthly max two. then we can open up the value options here we have the measure that sets the value which in this case is now going to be the new measure data labels value and it just shows q1 q2 q3 q4 oh nice and now i can add more information to it so here we have detail all right let's enable it open it up click on data and also for the detail part of the label i created a new measure data labels detail and this measure is set up in a very similar way it only returns the quarter value which is calculated over here under a certain condition and format it in this way that's it all right so i'm going to go back to the formatting options i just want to change the formatting to a dark blue color and let's make the detail values bold and then here the normal values that show the quarter well those i want to have in that same color and let's make it not bold maybe also a little bit smaller just like this and let's change also the background let's turn it on all right and let's go for a light blue color now, i think this already looks good but i think it would be even better if we take these labels and push them a bit more inwards huh, so that they are on the right hand side of these vertical lines and you can do that if you go here to the build panel and just shuffle around the order huh, because the labels they are applied to well monthly max two so that one i'm going to push over here to the right hand side and by doing that, you see that the x-axis labels are also nicely lined up with the middle one, the main series, number of likes. And now we just have to well, push the 
vertical lines to the left and side, which we can do by going back to formatting options, columns, all, layout, and then here we can play around with the space in between the series. So this one I've put now to 16%. Now let's also push this one a little bit more down. Well, now it's all the way at zero. And then I go back to space between series. I see with 23%, I have the vertical lines nicely aligned on the left hand side of the first column of each quarter. All right. Now, if we go back to data labels, there's one more adjustment that I would do. Let's switch to all options. Now here we can still change the position from outer to inside and you see now they jump inwards more to the right hand side of each vertical line. However, the first one disappeared. So I have to turn overflow text on and then I have them all back again. And another thing I would change is here on the layout. We have now multi-line and I probably would align the text to the left hand side so that they more look like flags. So we have here data label flags, as I call it. So you see, this is a really nice UX trick to take more control over the vertical lines in your Power BI visuals, which you don't have with the standard grid lines. So if I go here to the grid lines option, you see, I cannot even add vertical grid lines to this setup. And what do you think? Do you like this trick? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you want to learn more Power BI tips and tricks, then check out these two videos over here. And if you want to build full Power BI reports with me, learn all of my Power BI tips of how to build really solid reports every single time and check out my Power BI design transformation program. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.